what's up everyone? Welcome to the 34th episode of Mindless Pod. How's everything? I hope everyone is doing fine. Um, so today is the 12th of December. It's 2 a.m. in the morning now. What a time to start filming, right? <laughs> anyway, I've been having a lot of fun taking pictures since the last episode. Um, you'll see them later on this episode, of course. Um, so yeah, turn the geek mode on, sit back, relax, and enjoy the show. So, Luffy here is one of my haul from Anime Festival Asia, which I went to last month. Um, I kind of talked about it on the last episode. Um, uh, I haven't played much, uh, neither have I taken many pictures of it until now. <laughs> Um, so I thought Luffy here is an underrated figure. Um, I mean, he has great articulation and he looks like he comes straight out of the anime to me. Um, I'm not sure why the line is so unpopular that it was cancelled. It's a shame really, because we don't even get a complete lineup of Luffy's crew. Um, so what we have so far from... SHF One Piece line are Luffy, Sanji, Nami, and Ace. Um, I should receive Sanji soon. Um, it's on its way to me now. Um, anyway, this setup is inspired by Peggy or Buggy, the pirate, um, I guess, you know. Um, for those of you who are not familiar, well, uh, Buggy is a clown pirate, so I thought, you know, we can pretend that these are his men. Um, damaging Luffy's um, straw hat. Check out that expression on Luffy's face. They really did a fine job making this figure. Just let me show you the packaging and the accessories for a second. Um, as you can see, the packaging's a pretty standard SHF packaging. Um, I really like the coloring on this one though. Um, I think it kind of stands out if you put it among SHF boxes. Also, I think they put in a lot of effort with the pictures and the artwork at the back um, of the box. Um, these pictures are better than the average HHF pictures to me at least. Um, um, yeah, be but before we move on to another segment, just let me highlight the fact that he comes with two heads. Um, the one that I have on is for you to put the head on. Um, it has a less messy hair. Um, so, you know, the head can fit in nicely. Um, the other one has a messier hair, which you just saw earlier. Um, it's meant to be the quote and unquote um, unheaded head. Um, One Piece, you know, definitely is an interesting anime and manga, no doubt. So, if you have not watched it, you definitely should. Um, I think the anime has more than 600 episodes now. So I received um, this set cross a few days back. I was very excited about it since he is one of the more badass rider in my opinion, especially in the Kamen Rider Spirits manga. Um, however, I'm telling you that I'm slightly disappointed with this figure. Um, I'm not sure if the camera can pick it up, but paint work on this figure is untidy. Um, we have some rough surfaces on the chest and stomach area. Um, some pain bleedings too on uh, certain parts like the side of the forearm. Um, we have some on the stomach there. Not sure if the camera can pick it up but they are there. Um, you know, it's not something that I would expect from SH figure arts. On top of that, um, it's relatively hard to put on the back of his scarf, um, unlike Stronger. 
um, the neck joint actually you know got separated too as I was playing with it earlier and it seems when I turn too hard um, the neck joint will certainly get separated nevertheless as I said earlier I'm only slightly disappointed because despite of its many flaws this figure is very photogenic it looks great on camera at least to myself um, you can decide if that is true for yourself when you see the pictures um, in the end of this segment but yeah ultimately I buy figures to have them displayed and to take pictures of them fortunately for me you know this guy looks great on camera so it's not that bad after all Also got myself an alternative zero from Hobby Link Japan as well. Um, a cool figure. Mm, he is a character from Kamen Rider Ryuki, um, but he is not exactly a rider. Um, I thought the design of alternative zero is cool. Um, I love riders whose designs have hints of insects or grasshoppers. You know, I think it is reminiscence of the original design for the riders. Details on Zero is great indeed, great paint job too. Um, comparing Set Cross and Alternative Zero here, I feel Zero has a much better quality, although both of them are regular releases in the same month of November. Um, this guy comes with a sword, a few cards, as well as some sets of hands as accessories. I see a lot of people complaining badly about this figure not having die-casted feet. Um, I think this is the direction where SHF is going because their recent releases all come with no die-casted feet. And I'm talking about the riders here. Um, the feel that I get from playing with this guy is very similar to what I got with Kamen Rider Black Renewal. As for myself, I have no problem with it because you see, die-casted feet um, are good for posing but there is always a way to get your desired pose even without those die-casted feet. Um, I don't know, maybe it's just me. I used to collect and pose Marvel and DC figures so I'm not really depending on those. As I was about to film this, I remembered a line from the X-Force comics. I believe it is Phantom X narrative speech. 
and it goes roughly like this. Everyone has his or her own poison. It is the denial of this poison that leads to cancer. And you know what? It's official now. St. Cloth Myth EX line is one of my poison. I mean, damn, their figures are awesome indeed. So this is the newest addition to my St. Cloth Myth line collection. Um, here we have Sagittarius Gold Saint. This particular figure is interesting because you know, you can use him as Seiya by putting Seiya's head on, which I did. Or, you can have him as Sagittarius Aeolos by putting Aeolos head on, um, which is the main head, actually. Um, but I'm going to use this as Sagittarius Seiya, um, just because, you know, although Aeolos is an important character throughout the series, we don't see him that much. Um, also, you know, I've been watching a lot of Senseiya Omega lately, in which, you know, Seiya has become the Sagittarius Sin. And I do have Koga from SH Figuarts. So I think it's a good idea to have them displayed together. You know what, I just learned yesterday that they are going to make a figure of Sagittarius Seiya himself, accurate to, you know, how he looks in Senseiya Omega. Um, this is not an anime or, you know, manga accurate Sagittarius Seiya as to how he looks in Omega. Um, but oh well, it's still a great figure. My only problem with this figure is the different gold colors on certain parts of the armor, which I'm sure you can see clearly throughout this segment. Um, I'm not sure why Pandai has decided to give the different colors or if it is a mistake during production in a factory um, but with certain lighting technique you know uh, I was able to lessen the difference in color when I was taking photos of this figure and you will see them later so let's explore the packaging for a bit so here is how the packaging originally looks Um, and here is how the armor itself looks attached to the armor piece and this is supposed to be how the armor is when it is unattached to the scene. And this piece is actually a thin piece of plastic which you can remove to reveal the actual box itself. Very cool artwork, um, it is designed to look like the container of the gold cloth of Sagittarius. And now let's see what's in the box. Um, so we have three blisters and um, this is the first one and it's where the figure and the majority of the armor parts used to be. Um, as you can see, nothing much left here. So. <clears throat> the second blister is where the base for the armor is, as you can see right there. Uh, we have the we have the headpiece for the armor, but you know I prefer to display them without the headpieces or helmets in some cases. Uh, we have very cool uh, bow and arrow in this blister as well, and of course we have Iolo's head, which I showed earlier. Now on to the third blister. Um, this is where the majority of the fun factor comes from. Um, we have a cape, which I can't even remember any instances when, you know, Sagittarius is wearing it. Um, we have the different faces for Iolos, of course. And we have Seiya's um, angry face and... but you know you can't see it at this point um, the one that I have on is actually from Pegasus Seiya um, it's not from this uh, figure itself it's great that I also have Pegasus Seiya so I can swap parts here and there you see and of course we have the few sets of hands 
So before we move on, let me give a quick size comparison. Um, this figure is bigger than both Marvel Legends and the regular SH figure arts. Um, I think it should be in 7 inch or even 7.5 inch scale. Um, so, you know, you should be able to imagine how big the box is. And oh yeah, uh, most of the armor parts are die casted. I almost forgot to highlight that. So it's 1 a.m. on 14th of December now. We are a little over a week away from Christmas, so I thought I'll take this opportunity to wish people in the community and well everyone who is watching this a very Merry Christmas. It's the holiday we've always been looking forward to every year, so you know, have a great time with your loved ones. Be on the lookout for Santa coming through your chimney or well, you know, if you don't have a chimney, maybe he'll come through your window. <laughs> um, time totally flies by, doesn't it? It's going to be 2014 soon, um, you know, as usual, I will pull up, uh, I will put up a 2013 picture showcase video nearing the end of this year, so be on the lookout for that. And with that said, this is the end of this episode. I hope you all enjoyed it. This is Mindless, signing off. Oh, by the way, don't forget to click the subscribe button. It's free.